Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice exponential Diophantine equation. We have 3 to the power x plus 4 to the power y equals 5 to the power z. x, y, and z are integers. That's why this is called a Diophantine equation. And we're going to be solving for x, y, and z. You probably have some ideas at this point, but let's see how this goes. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and write the 3 as 4 minus 1 to the power x and then 4 to the y, and write the 5 as 4 plus 1 to the power z. So my goal is to take a look at this expression uh, using modular arithmetic, using remainders. For example, if you look at this expression mod 2, which means you're only considering the remainders upon division by 2, you're going to notice the following. 4 is 0 mod 2, so that's going to disappear. We're going to end up with negative 1 to the power x. 4 is again 0, so that's going to disappear. And we're going to write the congruence relation that 3 lines means basically is congruent to, not equal to, necessarily. And again, this is 0. We end up with 1 to the power z, which is actually 1. And this is all in mod 2. So if an equation is true in general for some values, then it should also be true in any mod. So from here, what do we get? We get a negative 1 to a power equals or congruent to 1, which means x must be even. So I can go ahead and write x as 2n, where n is an integer, right? I hope you'll remember that because I'm not writing that n is an integer, but it is. And then we're going to do a little bit of modification on this one. Let's go ahead and focus this time on the 4 to the power y and 5 to the power z. So we're going to write it a little differently, 3 to the x, and then I'm going to use a 3 this time because 4 is 3 plus 1, and then 5. I want to express 5 using a 3. Let's go ahead and write it as 2 times 3 minus 1, and then, of course, to the power z. Now we're going to look at this expression mod 2 again, right? Why mod 2, though, right? Because 3 is 1 mod 2, which is nice, so this is going to be 1, and then 3 plus 1 is going to be 0 mod 2, and then 2 times 3 minus 1 is just going to be negative 1 mod 2. Okay, so this is going to be a negative 1. And we're going to go ahead and write this in mod 2 again. Okay, now take a look at this. Of course, I forgot to write the z there. Again, we have a similar situation. Negative 1 to the power z is congruent to 1. If z is not even, this is not going to happen. So z also needs to be even which means z can be written as 2k, where k is an integer. So x and z are both even, which means we can go ahead and write our expression as follows. 3 to the power 2n plus 4 to the power y equals 5 to the power 2k. And this is the most critical part, because if you isolate 4 to the y from here, guess what happens? We're going to be able to factor this expression using difference of two squares. Yes, because this is 5 to the k squared. You've probably seen some videos on YouTube where people just directly uh, factor using difference of two squares, but you have to make sure first that the exponents are even before you can do that. Now, here's our expression. Let's go ahead and factor it. And it's going to look like this when it's factored. 5 to the k plus 3 to the n. k and n are integers. 5 to the k minus 3 to the power n. Awesome. Now, here's the nice part. 4 to the y is a power of 2, isn't it? So, a power of 2 can only be made from powers of 2 because if you insert a 3 or a 5 or a 7, it's no longer going to be a power of 3, I mean 2. So, these need to be powers of 2. So, I'm going to set these equal to 2 to the power a and 2 to the power b. By the way, bear with me because we're going to go through a lot of number theory here. Anyways, so this gives us the following. 4 to the power y equals 2 to the power a times 2 to the power b, which means 2 to the power a plus b. Nice, right? Great. So here's what we get from here. 4 is 2 to the power 2, so we can write the 4 to the y as 2 to the power 2y. So from here we get 2y equals a plus b, or a plus b equals 2y. And notice that 2 to the a is greater than 2 to the b because that's a sum as opposed to a difference. Therefore, a needs to be greater than b. Okay? Let's go ahead and take note of that. And we'll continue with a little bit of uh, more number theory. 
Alrighty. So what do we get? We got this equation. We set these equal to 2 to the a and 2 to the b. Let's go ahead and write that down. 5 to the k plus 3 to the n is 2 to the a. 5 to the k minus 3 to the n is 2 to the b. Guess what we're going to do now? We're going to subtract these equations. You know why? Because good things are going to happen. When we subtract, obviously, we need to negate the second one and add. So 5 to the k is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with 2 times 3 to the n. So we got rid of the k, which is good. On the right-hand side, we get 2 to the a minus 2 to the b, which is basically like a difference of 2 powers of 2. But guess what we can do here? We can do the following. Since a is greater than b, 2 to the a minus 2 to the b is positive, obviously, right? So we can kind of take out the smaller power, which is 2 to the b, and then write the inside as 2 to the power, I was going to write b, but that's supposed to be an a, right? 2 to the power a minus b, minus 2 to the power 0, or just 1. Make sense? So we factored out, it's kind of like this. You have 2 to the 7 minus 2 to the 3, and you can always take out 2 to the 3. Make sense? Same thing. Now, we got this type of equation. What are we going to do with this? Well, here's the thing. You have 2 times a power of 3 on the left-hand side, and you have a power of 2 times another power of 2 minus 1. So what happens here? Compare the powers, the numbers, and you, you'll find out that b actually needs to be 1 because these numbers have to be equal. Otherwise, you're not going to get a 2 from any of these things, right? So from here, b equals 1. Awesome. And if b is equal to 1, we get something like this. 2 times 3 to the n equals 2 times this, right? And then, of course, since b is equal to 1, and the 2's cancel out, we get 3 to the n equals 2 to the power a minus 1 minus 1. Isn't that awesome? Okay, great. It's all about remainders. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and write the 2 as 3 minus 1. We didn't have to do it, by the way, but it's just a little better that way. Now, we're going to look at this mod 3, because notice that this is going to become 0, this is going to become 0. So mod 3, we're going to have 0 is equivalent to, or congruent to, negative 1 to the power a minus 1, minus 1, right? And this is mod 3. Great. What do we get from here? We get the following. Add 1 to both sides, negative 1 to the power a minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 3. And this basically means that a minus 1 needs to be even. Otherwise, this is not going to work. So a minus 1, let's go ahead and set it equal to 2t or not 2t. And from here, we get the following. Remember, 3 to the n was equal to 2 to the a minus 1 minus 1. So now 3 to the n is going to equal 2 to the power 2t minus 1, which is a difference of two squares. Oh, man. Now we can factor it as 2 to the t plus 1 times 2 to the t minus 1. And guess what? This is a power of 3, and it only can be made from powers of 3. So these have to be powers of 3 now. Isn't that fun? 3 to the s, and let's call this 3 to the power m. Hopefully, we didn't use those variables before. Now, we get 3 to the n equals 3 to the s plus m, because we're supposed to add the exponents. And this means n is equal to s plus m. And of course, s is greater than m, right? So far, so good. Are you following? Okay, here's the next steps. We got this so far. Let's go ahead and write it down. We have 3 to the s. We're going to do something similar. 2 to the t plus 1, and then 3 to the m is 2 to the t minus 1. And again, we're going to subtract these expressions because that gives us a lot of good information. So let's go to negate, negate, and negate. We're going to cancel out the 2 to the t, and we're going to get 3 to the s minus 3 to the m, equals 2. Awesome. What do we do with that? Of course, m is greater than s. I mean, s is greater than m. Sorry about that. So we're going to factor 3 to the m again, the smaller exponent. That's going to give us 3 to the power s minus m minus 1 equals 2. And looking at this very carefully, you're going to realize that there is no 2s on the left-hand side. There shouldn't be. Therefore, 3 to the m must go away. So that can only be done if m is equal to 0. And if m is equal to 0, 3 to the s minus 1 needs to equal a 2, which means s is equal to 1. And then from here, if you plug in everything, you're going to get t is equal to 1. If t is equal to 1, 
then you're going to get a is equal to 3. Remember our expression 3 to the power, uh, what was it? Yes, this one, right? I think it's this one. Yeah, a minus 1 is equal to 2t. So once you find the value of t, you can plug it in to find a. And then once we know that a is equal to 3, we get 5 to the k plus 3 to the n is equal to 8. And this can only happen if k is equal to 1 because these are integers, remember that and n is equal to 1 and from here we get the x and y values because remember when we first started we expressed them uh, in terms of um, k and uh, n right so x is equal to 2 and z is equal to 2k so from here we're going to get the following if k is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1 y is going to be at 2 z is going to be at 2 and x is going to be at 2. in other words this is the pythagorean theorem oh come on we did all this work for this well we also showed that there are no other solutions because if there were, they would come up. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.